in retrospect, I wish we had launched our social media uh, program a little bit earlier, but we were so tied up with, you know, getting computer access and getting a place to work. But as soon as we opened the embassy, which was uh, in 2014, um, you know, we, we realized that um, we had an opportunity here to overcome our handicaps. Our handicaps being small embassy, small number of staff, very little money, and late <laughs> compared to other countries. And of course, the fact that there were, most importantly, that we didn't have this pre-existing relationship to build on. So how do we, how do we make up ground fast without resources? And the, you know, the answer that I saw was social media. Because although um, Myanmar was a very, you know, it's a poor country where there was uh, fairly low rates of connection to the internet, you could see that those, those people who were on the internet were always on Facebook. Facebook to many people in Myanmar is kind of coterminous with the internet. Even today, they don't have email. They go on Facebook and they use Facebook as their email. They don't go to news sites. They go to face their Facebook feed is their news. So it's really, people spend a lot of time on Facebook and the, the target, our target audience is exactly those people who are on Facebook because it's all the people who are uh, affluent enough to be connected and who are interested in news and issues and so on. So we put a, f you know, we put a fair bit of um, uh, focus on social media and I, I put a lot of my time, and it was kind of my uh, labor of love or my after work activity <laughs> was um, working on Facebook and we had the, you know, our, our boon in that was I uh, had a fantastic uh, Myanmar intern, a young, just out of school uh, Myanmar woman who um, you know spent all of her spent a lot of time on social media and was very good informant about what people in Myanmar were interested in so we um, we were not the first into social media there were a, a dozen embassies ahead of us the US the UK had been on for three years or four years and the US had been on for a couple of years but we um, we applied some of the lessons that I had learned in China um, to our social media uh, engagement, which was we wanted a, we wanted a presence that was um, informal, uh, transparent, diverse, and interesting. And I always say those are four adjectives that don't come very easily to dip diplomats or civil servants. Very informal tone, conversational tone, um, a wide variety of uh, stuff, content about Canada and about Canada's role in particular in Myanmar all of our content locally created, um, transparent in that we were happy to have um, discussions about difficult topics, and transparent that we wanted people to have a chance to look into the embassy and see what we were doing. And that's something that was very attractive to people in Myanmar who have 50 years of not having any idea of what they're, what's going on behind the walls of their government. And uh, most important, interesting, because um, there's a lot of boring government communications out there and we wanted our stuff to be fun. Fun and engaging and that was the way we built an audience and then you know you build the audience of course in order to, to deliver some messages and you know our, our the easy message for us to deliver was we've got an embassy here and we're doing stuff but in particular the talking about the activities we were engaged in um, you know human rights freedom of expression and so on and also building a bit of an image of Canada. And the image of Canada that I think we very successfully built was a very kind of um, a respectful partner who's doing, who's trying to help. Not telling people in Myanmar, you know, you're wrong about this, shaking a finger, but being there to help. So the, the impact is a really difficult issue. And I, you know, I might say that if you're, um, if you're running a Canadian government social media project in a place where there's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of content out there already, and a lot of existing impressions of Canada, maybe it's pretty hard to kind of move the needle, right? And I've always said that actually um, social media in, or public diplomacy in general is probably much more important for small or medium-sized countries than it is for a country like, I don't know, Japan or China or United States because there's there's so much information and content that people are receiving to make their judgments about these countries already 
that the uh, incremental effect of, of uh, you know, the uh, American social media in country X is probably fairly limited. In Myanmar, we have an unusual case, a little bit of an unusual case, in that, um, number one, there's nothing out there about Canada. So you're starting with kind of a tabula rasa, and of the entire amount of information about Canada, the Embassy of Canada produced a lot of it. I mean, you can't say that about <laughs> Canada in New York City or Canada in Paris or whatever. So we had a real, we had a real opportunity to make a decisive impact for better or worse, right? Um, the other thing is about the, um, the, the appetite of people in Myanmar for, for government social media. The, um, you know, we've, we've been tremendously successful, but the Americans have actually been very successful there too because I think the American social media presence there is seen as a news source. Because there's a kind of, there was traditional distrust of um, local government news sources, people do look at American social media as a, you know, looking for their, that's their official American foreign take on whatever the news of the day is. Um, but a as I said, in, in terms of, um, you know, our ability to occup to, to make a, a difference, that's a, very significant global debate about public diplomacy or social media. We definitely get a lot of messages out there, and how can you measure the impact? Uh, we have the Canadian Facebook page in Myanmar is by a wide margin the most liked Canadian foreign affairs Facebook page in the world. Wa very, very wide margin. We have over, well over 300,000 likes on our English page. Forget about our and it's over about 400,000 if you add in Burmese and French. Um, so that dwarfs countries where you'd expect there to be much bigger populations of people following, like, I don't know, India or Brazil or whatever. It's also a huge percentage of the number of people in Myanmar who are online, right? There's only, um, like there's only 10 million people in Myanmar who are online. I think there's 8 million Facebook accounts. So. Um, 400,000, so 5% of the people on Facebook are following the Canadian, you know, the Embassy of Canada Facebook page. So um, there's, there's, a there's a lot of eyeballs seeing our content. Has it changed impressions of Canada? It's, that's a very hard thing to measure. I, you know, I wish I had had the money and time to do a survey, national survey in 2013, what do you think of Canada? And I think people would have said, I don't know, it's far away, it's cold. Whereas I think now there's you know, a lot of anecdotal evidence that people are aware of the presence of the Embassy of Canada and its positive impact. And um, they're, they're less interested in news about Canada than about what Canada is doing in Myanmar. In, in China, my experience in Weibo was that um, the Chinese audience was very interested in exotica, in you know, Canadian food, travel destinations, fall leaves, that kind of stuff, interested in that. In Myanmar, people are much more, the thing that people in Myanmar are interested in is Myanmar. And what, what's your engagement with Myanmar, whether programming or whether it's um, seemingly frivolous things like we had this very famously successful campaign called Lunji Friday. Lunji is the traditional Burmese sarong that men wear. And so we had a policy that we, men in the embassy wore Lunji on Friday. That was, that kind of went viral um, not just because it's fun to see foreigners wearing lungi, but it kind of valorized. People in Myanmar have a sense because of the year of uh, military and isolation from abroad that they're not respected by, you know, by foreigners. And this was, um, they, they, they like seeing foreigners showing interest and respect for their culture. So that became, um, that became a very much copied aspect of our social media presence that you know, visits by, if I visited a famous Buddhist monk or, you know, people eating Myanmar food, that was a really popular thing and it's not as trivial as it seems because I think it showed uh, us, it showed that we were not, we were not there to tell them what to do. We were there because we were interested in Myanmar and wanted to learn about Myanmar and are doing helpful things. The negative thing about social media, as in other countries, is that um, when I arrived in particular, there was a lot of concern about incitement to violence and the propagation of crazy 
rumors uh, very and had a very negative effect on uh, intercommunal tensions. That there were a lot of there was a lot of violence was stoked by rumors on Facebook at a time when people weren't really, you know, didn't really have much experience with the internet, you know, websites and online news and stuff. And um, the the internet, the IT revolution just fell on the country all at once. And um, in that period, 2012, 13, there were a lot of very unpleasant uh, phenomena that were stoked by internet rumors, Facebook, basically Facebook rumors. So.